After conceding four goals to Germany on Friday night, concerns have arisen regarding England's defence. We discussed what went wrong, who should be dropped, and whether this is a huge issue with Euro 2025 kicking off in only nine months' time. This is our England vs Germany review. Alright, let's get into it then. We're going to be talking about England today. We're going to be talking about some of the issues in the side and obviously a lot of from the game against Germany on Friday. Annoyingly, we actually did a video on this exact topic talking about why it would be an issue before and then we just forgot to post it. We're very busy on Friday, obviously going to the game. But yeah, it's a, it's a bit a big issue for this England national side is the defence. We saw it against Germany, Harry. What went wrong? In the game on Friday. Yeah, it was just really, really poor. I think as, as, a, as a back four, England got caught out so much by Germany. There seemed to be every time Germany came forward, you know, especially seeing it live, you could just see the amount of space that was there for Germany. Even when Germany didn't play the ball, and in turn, you, know, you, you, you might not see it on TV, but even when Germany came down the left and didn't use the right-hand side, there was still so much space on the right, and that was vice versa. It just felt like Germany did such a good job of stretching the defence but on the other hand England have got to deal with that and they've got to cope with that because every side's going to do that there was way too much space way too open and just looked miles off it everyone defensively for England yeah. looked miles off the pace I, I, th I thought the result was very flattering if it wasn't for the fact that Georgia Stanway is brilliant I think England would have probably been on the receiving end of a very embarrassing victory I think 4-3 makes it look a lot closer than it was I thought Germany yeah. the better side for a large portion of the game I don't think England attack looks brilliant at the moment so it's worrying in the defence we've known this since well since the end of Euro 2022 mm. really since then I think the defence has always been a bit of an issue um, and for a variety of reasons let's go through some of them today then and some of the reasons why Germany were able to open up England with such ease we'll start with team selection because I think this I mean this is what we uh, did speak about on Friday and never posted was who would start at centre back what are the potential issues with with like with everyone because um, obviously I think with team selection is a bit weird at the moment because we don't have Neve Charles and you think she'd be nailed so that does complicate matters but other than that at the moment uh, Weigman has all of the options available to her on previous mm. tournaments like you take the last World Cup you could say well there were injuries here there were injuries there you've got players that perhaps you know haven't played a lot of football recently mm. but at the moment bar Leah Williamson everyone in that back line and, and, and bar Neve Charles obviously is who you've, you've got everyone available yeah. So I think Weidman's out of excuses, really. This just doesn't work. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't, as you say. We knew that you know, the, the back four that we saw against Germany, we, especially the centre-half pairing of Brighton and Williamson, does not work. They don't work well together. And I think especially when you have a Millie Bright, who I love Millie Bright, but she's lost a yard of pace. And we, and and we late, saw that for the first goal. And we did see that, yeah. She just couldn't, you know... It, let, and obviously, again, we saw Williamson, who is out of form for Arsenal, and once again has proven that for England. There's a reason that Slager's dropped her against West Ham for Arsenal, because yeah. Williamson is out of form. Why is Weigmann's gone and started her at the, in, against Germany? I do not know. I think both centre halves really struggled, and as you say, Bright, you know, Williamson gave away the ball for for the for the first goal, and then Bright, because she's lost a yard, can't wouldn't couldn't catch up, and, yeah. and you know, and and then suddenly both centre halves are completely out of the equation, and Bright had to give away a penalty to to give Hampton a chance. It, it's, I, I, it's I thought bizarre. I thought Williamson was really poor all yeah. evening, if I'm honest. I think that she looked really sloppy in possession, and the issue is that's Williamson's big strength. So when she's not yeah. looking good in possession, what does she offer? Because I think I think she, I've always thought she's too aggressive to be a centre back. You know, she was meant to play midfield for Weigman in Euro 2022. It was a sudden change of heart that saw Georgia Stanway come back into the eleven yeah. and let and Williamson move into the back line to replace Alex Greenwood. But before them, they would have gone in with the Greenwood bright back line and Williamson playing in the eight role. And I think that shows that her passing is so good. She's she's better operating higher up the field, I think, or at least you know because her passing is so good, mm. she could play higher up the field. For me, she she's not combative enough. She's not strong enough as a centre back, and and mm. I think that she's a good leader, and I can I can see that. But Weigman in the past has not been afraid to bin off captains. We saw it for the Netherlands side in 2017. She got rid of the captain because she wasn't performing. She yeah, got, she dropped her, and then um she just the player decided to stop playing international football because she wasn't going to start, and mm. she wasn't happy with that. So we've seen before. Weigman is not afraid to drop people just because they're the captain. And for me. She, Williamson's got to improve massively if not she's got it she can't be yeah. starting because for me Greenwood and Bright's a better partnership I think Greenwood offers you someone who is much more in form arguably at the moment better in possession much better defensively so I can't see why you justify Williamson over Greenwood and Greenwood's a natural left centre half mm. Lair Williamson isn't I 
And so for me, it, it, Greenwood is the nailed on starter. And then you choose yeah. between Brighton and Williamson depending on the opponent. And that's the thing, you choose between Brighton and Williamson, but you've also got Mayor Letizia, who obviously we can see play right back, and hopefully we will see play right back and not Lucy Bronze ever again. But I, d- I do think that Brighton and Williamson have got to be careful because you say Greenwood should be the, na- the nailed name on the team sheet. And I think Letizia is putting up a really good fight to be in that conversation to be the second starting centre half. And. I, I do think that if you if you play Mini Bright, you have to play Greenwood next to us so that you've got someone that can recover. Uh, and, you know, if you're going to play Williamson, you, you you have to play Greenwood as well. Because, again, if you do lose the ball, if, if Williamson is aggressive, Bright can't cover her because Bright yeah. hasn't got the pace. So, And then you've got a right back who's playing right wing. Yeah. And, and then you mentioned Lucy Brunson. I think this issue of team selection goes across the whole team. Yeah. You know, I thought Beth Mead just really struggled to have an impact. Mm. on the game on Friday I thought Ella Toon I mean you look at that miss in the first half which would have yeah. I think it would have drawn us level 3-3 at that point in the game yeah. if I'm if I'm right in saying so and that was such a, such a poor miss and and Toon's just completely out of form right now and the problem is you struggle to justify her starting when you've got Grace Clinton who's crushing it for Manchester United yeah. at the moment and Jess Park who looks one of the best players in the world right now and so it's really difficult therefore to say oh yeah Toon's got to be starting Toon wasn't good enough against Germany yeah. hasn't been good enough this season hasn't been good enough for a while now and Beth Mead just since she came back from injury just hasn't looked the same player and yeah. didn't play particularly well on Friday night and then you look at players who just aren't getting opportunity and you really struggle to see why you know I think someone like Nikita Paris would do a better yeah. job right now she's in form she's playing well why not give her a shot on that right hand side there are so many options and then you see you, you know the subs come on and it's Chloe Kelly coming on mm. and that just makes no sense to me yeah I think it's one of those where I understand why Vivian wants to play the players she knows, you know, the players that have it's done well for you. We've seen it for lo- loads yeah. of international and managers. Do it. I think it for me. If you want to do that, you don't do it against Germany. If you know, because I get that the way to get players into form is ask you to play them to keep getting the goes, and it will click eventually. But if you know they're out of form, don't play them in the Germany game. Play them against South Africa t- tomorrow. Get them a few goals and get them back in form. Because Weigmann's now played them against Germany, either she's going to play the same players again and then there's no rotation through the squad, or we're going to see the same players that we know are performing play against weaker opposition. We don't want to see that. We want to see the informed players like Jess Park play against the best teams in the world and then players who are out of form like Ella Toon give us some minutes against South Africa, let her go score a double and and, and try and increase her form. It's yeah. you know, International football isn't like club football. If they're out of form, you don't have to play them. It's as simple as that. Uh, that's an, it's an interesting point. I think for me, obviously weigmann has gone for players she trusts against Germany and then she'll go for players she wants to test against South Africa. Mm. And so we'll, so we'll see more rotation players. But the issue for me is if that is your strongest eleven, the side that played against Germany right now, then we've got huge issues. Because yeah. if that's the players you trust, and we were terrible in that game against Germany, mm. if it wasn't for that penalty, and, and, and well, to be fair, I know that like, one of Germany's penalties was never a penalty. Um, and, and some of the goals were, were a little unlucky. Well, the last one, probably a little unlucky. But... I just thought throughout it all, England were way too open, way yeah. too open, and that's a huge issue for me. And and if that is the strongest team that England have to offer right now, I have serious doubts about our ability to go and win Euro twenty twenty five. We're going mm. in as reigning champions. We're going in to defend our honour. And I look at the squad right now, and and I don't ha- I don't see anything that gets me excited. Yeah, and that's the huge issue. I think without Lauren James in there, and that makes a huge difference because yeah. James changes games in in an instant. We just ha- lacked. We lacked the ability to create loads of opportunities. The defence, as it has been for a good few years now, is is awful. Yeah. And that's a real concern because before we could get by by the fact that Kira Walsh would make a great tackle or one of our backline mm. would do something brilliant because they are good defenders in their own right. But structurally, there is no organisation there. Yeah. I thought that, you know, and, and you can't even say, oh, Neve Charles makes a huge difference. She doesn't make any difference defensively. No. Like, Jess Carter is, is probably a better defender than the Neve Charles, but that the organisation that backline was terrible. I remember the shot for Gilia Gwynn, the second goal. We spoke a bit about the first goal. We haven't really spoken about the second goal, but we saw the shot, and you've got all four of England's backline on the right hand side of the field. Yeah, because they've pushed across to try and handle Germany. Gwynn's just gone really high and wide, and there's loads of space, and she just you know runs into that yeah. space, receives the ball, and scores a goal. That's because there's so much space there. Yeah, and our backline's never going to recover because look at the pace. Mm. Look yeah. at the face across that back line. No one's getting back in, and that's a real issue right now for England. Yeah, that's the thing. I think, obviously, we've mentioned the other three defenders. Haven't mentioned Jess Carter, but that's simply because we know she probably won't be playing. 
can't, you know, we know once Neve Charles is back, that will be Neve Charles. But I struggle to see who's defending if Neve Charles and Lucy Bronze are playing. That is true, backs. and and this is the thing. I think in order in order to have a a really good chance going into Switzerland next next year, and that the preparation for that does start now. You know, it starts in these international breaks. You know, we're only nine months away from the sef, is it seven or nine months away from the tournament. I can't remember. Nine now. months. Nine from months because July isn't it? Yeah, and it, it's one of those where we need to see the boldness from Serena that has won her t- tournament before. We need yeah. to see her, you know, get not, you know, but replace her trusted players with the players that are going to do the performances. And, you know, I, you know, players, either her trusted players have got to pick up form or Serena's going to have to be bold. I think Serena will be bold. We know how, we know Weidman is a, such a good manager. She will have no hesitation to drop the players that you to drop her favourites to to, to to win the tournament. I think it's different for this international break because she the, she wants to play them now to try and get them ready for the tournament. But if, I think if we get to July and the, her you know the the trusted players aren't in form, I think Serena will have no doubt to drop them. I think the USA will be a really interesting test because that they will. are the best team in the world right yeah. now. And I think if we play the same eleven we played against Germany, US will score more. And yeah. that's a really I, worrying prospect yeah. right now. The fact that the US could go out and just score, you know, five six, that would be really damning because we're then eight think, months away from a tournament. and The US score that many, that I, would be really. I would be surprised. I'd be very very surprised. Even if England on a bad day can see that many because the Germany game, you know, two of them were penalties. We it was it was a really weird game. And in, England fair, scored I, three, yeah. so it kind of cancelled out the fact they scored four. You look at the organisation from... Yeah, but I don't think it does, though. That's the, and that's what I mean. I think the goals mask a bad performance. You know, Georgia Stanway scored a penalty, which we were somewhat fortunate to get as a handball, and then ran, managed to run for, run for and score. But the rest of our attack didn't look very functional. And if we're relying on Georgia Stanway to score all of our goals, uh, yeah. we, I think we're in a bit of trouble. Um, but yeah, no, I, I thought I thought defensively there was a real lack of organisation, and that's that's a concern. For me, the back line, it's quite simple. Neve Charles is definitely starting a left-back. I don't mm. really see who else challenges her for a position right now. For me, Alex Greenwood has to start. Whatever you want to do with that right centre-half, I don't mind. Bry, yeah. Williamson. To be honest. If you're desperate to play bronze, then Letizia, because I yeah. think she's so good, but if not Letizia, right back. I think, you know, if you look at how a lot of top teams play now, you want to you want to build up that back three. You want to mm. push one of your full-backs on. You can't have Charles and bronze on the same pitch and I think Chelsea are going to find that out very shortly Yeah, um, I just don't think that works because both want to go forwards and the problem is I mean, I think bronze is fine defensively but she won't stay there mm. she'll, kick, she'll drift forwards we saw it the other evening we saw it on Friday night for England she just gets caught so high up the field and then it leaves you very exposed because she, she no longer has the pace to get back in anymore Yeah, I mean there were times on Friday night where she was ahead of Beth Mead and I don't get how that helps anyone because Beth Mead dropping, having to drop in, she's not a great defender. Yeah. She's not a great defender. Sorry, Beth Mead, if you're watching. You're not a great defender. <laughs> that, I just don't get why Lucy Bronze insists on going and playing right wing all the time. Mm. That's a real issue. And for me, that can't persist at England. Yeah. So it's either get your discipline right or Lucy has to start. Yeah. There has to be the ultimatum to Lucy it's, Bronze. It's, it's the simple factor that if the players who are struggling right now don't get it together, there are so many informed players in the England squad on the bench who will just come in and take their places immediately. As you know, Greenwood's the obvious one at centre half. Letizia's the obvious Greenwood, one at right back. Greenwood it, has to start. I, th- I to so honest, obvious to me. I I think even when Williamson and Bright are on their day, Greenwood's still in the conversation to start, and that is what surprises me. It's I think Alex Greenwood has been overlooked by England for way, for far too yeah, long. Yeah, I, I don't get it. Yeah, I, I, I really don't she get could, it. From, an incredible centre half, absolutely incredible. We see the organisation at Man City. I you know, I look at the, the the big three sides in the in the DSL, you know. Or defensively, I think City are the most organised because of Alex Greenwood. I yeah. think Chelsea and Arsenal. It's fair to say over the last you know season, la- after over last season and the start of this season, haven't looked brilliant at the back. No. And, and whereas City have, so the fact that Greenwood doesn't even get a, you know barely gets a look in is is still surprising. It's, it's ridiculous to me. I, d- I don't get the picking favourites over those top players. And yeah, I completely agree. I think City defensively have been the best of us yeah. outside. Um, and United this season. And, and yet yeah. the players you're overlooking are Maya Letizia and Alex Greenwood, the players that are mm. the sole reason these sides are so good, or a big part of why these sides are so good defensively. Yeah. It's bizarre to me. Uh, let's turn our attention to in goal, because I think we've spoken enough about the centre-halves. Hannah Hamps obviously played this one. Does that give an insight into where Serena's thoughts lie at the moment? Because this is the big one we expect Earps will probably play Coventry. Does that show where Serena's thinking, or what Serena's thinking? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I think it's come at a weird time, because... 
Last season, Hannah Hampton was the was the best goalkeeper in the league. Maybe with Kiara Keating, but obviously now Keating's not playing. Hampton get yeah. reigns supreme over Keating. It's been a weird season for Hampton. I don't really know what's happened. She's had a bit of a weird start to the campaign with Chelsea. She had a really good game for England, but again, there were just a few moments where I, uh, just a bit confusing. We saw another, you know, we, obviously the goal at Tottenham that Chelsea that she conceded. She was randomly miles off her line. We saw the same thing at Germany where you know they managed to hit the bar from it, or you know she got a little touch on it. But what, I don't know why she's so far. She, it feels like she's just starting to just drift away from her goal. It's I yeah. I don't know. I think Hampton is is will probably start the Euro. She's a very very good goalkeeper. She start she's Euros. probably ahead of Mary Earps right now. But she's got to be careful because I don't think the performances this season have been there for Hampton. And I, I think she has to be very careful that her standard doesn't drop. I, I think that's a really tough one to talk to, to discuss because you look at the WSL this season, she's scored, she's, we've Chelsea conceded four goals. Uh, two were against Tottenham and one was the weird Nildon one and the other was a free kick, which she couldn't have saved because the, her wall jumped yeah, out of the way. Is and so I admit, you know, there's mitigating circumstances there. The Caitlin Ford one probably could have done better. No, mm. on that one but equally what on earth is Lucy Bronze doing <laughs> just deal with her defensively <laughs> and so they're already there you've struck, struck yeah. off three goals and so I, I find it very difficult to argue her performances in WSL haven't been that strong because I don't really think she's been all that error prone distribution has been poor the distribution hasn't been as good as it normally is but it's still not terrible I don't think it's been poor that's that's the key difference for me and then you look at this England game she, she can't do anything about the first two goals it's a penalty because they're defence of the Chuckle Brothers at the moment. Yeah. And and um, Gilly Gwynn. She's not getting anywhere I do. She could have done more about the yeah. third. I think she could have saved Clara Buell's effort. But then equally, there were about three, four chances in there that I can remember fr- from the game where Hannah Hampton had to make some huge saves. Mm. You know, she tipped a couple around the post. There was one that she tipped over the bar. I, I thought that, yes, she could have done more about that third goal. And yes, I think her positioning is a bit odd at the moment. But overall... She's still a, a top top goalkeeper, still making some huge saves. And yeah, the, the amount of chances England conceded on Friday night could have been a lot likelier if it weren't for Hannah Hampton. I do agree that I I feel like you know we saw it of Arsenal with Zinsberger and D'Angelo. We've seen it at other clubs as well, where I think there's a especially with England now because it's not Mary Earps playing and everyone loves Mary Earps. I think there's a lot of people who will blame Hampton for the, the German uh, for more things than they should in the Germany game because they like the well, defeat. We, we saw her on social yeah, media how exactly having to lock her Instagram comments because of the abuse, which I thought was vile. So bizarre because but, uh, uh, she, yeah. but she's England. Why yeah. are we abusing our own goalkeeper? Oh, yeah. It's stupid. Um, but yeah, Frank, I, I love Hannah Hampton. I think that yes, she should have done more about the third goal, but overall, still a, an okay performance. Yes, yeah. and the big question, the, the bigger question is, you know, rather than how good is Hampton right now, is why Hampton over Erps and. For me, the only thing that points to that uh, offers you that Hampton doesn't is that communication, and I wonder if that's why the backline looks so disorganised. Because yeah. I think that's the big thing that Mary Earps gives you. She understands where she wants her yeah. backline to be. She understands how to communicate that to her mm. backline effectively. And I think that maybe with Earps in there, you have a little bit more organisation. But there's no reason Hampton can't become that. Yeah. Because that communication is something you can add to your game. It's or, not like it's not in the native yeah, ability to be able to shout at players. <laughs> it's just silent. Yeah, uh, it's a real issue. But no, I, I, and that, and so I think that is something that can be can be brought into our game yeah. before next next summer. Or you bring in Alex Greenwood and then she's the communicator. Well, exactly. And, and, and I think I think that would be a really interesting thing to see. Just someone that's going to organise that backline. Greenwood, yeah. Letitia, get them all in there. All yeah. the communicators. But it's, you know, I, I, yeah, Hampton has, didn't do much wrong. I, th- I think it's bizarre that people would have a go at her just because they like Mary Earps. You know, I, I don't get that. You know, it's the same. You know, it's the same people who like Leia Williamson but won't agree that she shouldn't be dropped because she should be dropped and. It's one of those just, I think, again, Weigmann's her favourites, but I think England have, you know, the fans have their favourites as well, and I get of that. Course, of course they do. But yeah. I think sometimes you have to accept that, that you know, when it's not their dad, when, it's, you know, when they shouldn't be playing, they shouldn't be playing. Yeah, and I, I think, uh, similar to Williamson, there are going to be some uncomfortable conversations about Millie, Millie Bright soon. I love Millie Bright. I love Millie Bright. I, I, and, you know, as, as, Chelsea, as a Chelsea fan, I, I think, you know, she's an incredible centre-half. But I, I have to be honest, and I, I, I think that, it, you know, if she was dropped for England, I can understand why. Yeah, I, I think her pace just isn't where it used to be. And the issue that gives you is that, we, as we saw on Friday night, yeah. if they're running behind, she's not going to catch up. Just I think we've seen yeah. it a few, 20 times now for Chelsea as well. Mm. Especially now that you don't have someone like Ev Perisse yeah. covering her, is there is going to be space there because Lucy Bronze is playing right it's wing. A, it's the same reason that Chelsea don't play, uh, very rarely play Brighton Buchanan. 
and they play Bjorn instead because you have to have that quicker centre yeah. half to cover Millie Bright. And, and I think that was the the signing of Millie and for yes. me is a big tell yeah. that they are looking. England the now. should also replicate that. Not we're not signing you, and you can't sign. Say, can't. Mainly, um, yeah. my yeah. English. She is our English, <laughs> hooray! But now you've got Greenwood, you've got Letitia, who are, are both pretty quick centre halves, and and they're playing brilliantly. But yeah, and then I just wait for Brooke Aspen. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Who is going to be? A, I believe will be a top. top and defender. Kate Reid at Arsenal as well. Yeah, what a fantastic yeah, partnership! Incredible. Are line. we going to have the same issue though? Them being too similar, the Chelsea <laughs> and Arsenal. Maybe, maybe, this is going to be a constant yeah. issue that plagues England. Is that we've got the, we've just got Williamson and Bright clones. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's going to be interesting. Could we see William P- Williamson play a little higher? Or is that midfield untouchable right now? I, I, it's untouchable. I mean, how can you? George Stanway, close. absolutely phenomenal, absolutely incredible, and Kira Walsh is always put you know puts up an exceptional performance on the football pitch. Yeah. Like it, it, you know, those two were absolutely brilliant against Germany. Yeah, without um, George Stanway, we would have struggled to score any goals. Yeah, and I, without Kira Walsh, we probably would have conceded. Stanway has been brilliant for club and country this season. She's looked brilliant playing for Bayern in the deeper role. She's looked brilliant playing for England in the higher role. She can do it all. What a player. Yeah. What we have one of the strongest midfield partnerships in, in international and, hey, football. I think there are positives. Bar Spain, and, but we don't count Spain. They're cheating. Yeah, they're not fine. <laughs> I've got too many yes. good midfielders. That's yeah. not allowed. Um, and then in terms of attacking areas for England... A whole host of issues, really. I think that Lauren Hemp still looked good. Yeah, on Lauren, Friday night, I, I thought Russo actually played quite well, and yeah, it opened and, up lots of questions about what on yes. earth Arsenal were doing. And people will say Russo, yes, Russo didn't score, but as we know of Alessia Russo, sometimes it's not her goal scoring ability where her good performances are. It's yeah. the movement, it's the it's the link up play that looks really really sharp, and that's why that's why you built that Tooney and Russo partnership because Russo would hold it up for Toon or Toon would play Russo but now so, we need an attack midfielder who's going to finish off those chances yeah, but because... if that's Lauren James then, but Lauren James doesn't really link up a pitch she just runs past four people and <laughs> stands on the edge and yeah. just keeps scoring goals but Russo played well and I think that was really good for her to see we said from her from an Arsenal point of view she needs to go to the international break play well for England and come back but yeah Arsenal what are you doing because Russo is a good striker what are Arsenal? I don't know. So that's a separate conversation. <laughs> Join us next week for an hour-long dialogue on what on earth Arsenal are doing. Um, so uh, overall, then, is this performance away for England or not? I don't think so. I think it was a weird game. It was four-three. There were three penalties. I don't know what was happening to be honest for half of it. It was it was an exciting affair. I think you also have to say Germany are a very good side. Bronze medalists at the Olympics. Under new management, Christian Vuk, um, yes. they look really good. They they are going to be up there. They will be at the sharp end of the tournament in, in Switzerland. I, I do believe that. So, you know, only losing by a one goal margin to a very, very strong team in a weird and wacky game, it's not a terrible result. Uh, but as you say, I think the USA one in November will be the bigger, bigger game because they are the best team in the world. England have got to prove that they can go up against the best team in the world and not look shaky. Yeah, I, I thought it was a very poignant loss in the sense that, you know, because Germany were the side we beat in the Euros of, of Euro 2022, yeah. it feels like this game has a lot of meaning behind it mm. because we, we, you know, we beat them in that final and now two years on we can't beat them. And for that reason, it, it just I feels see. really important. And, and that's the real concern for me. That, yeah. You know, they're a team we beat three years ago and now we look really bad against them. That's the only thing that worries me. I think in, in overall, though, yeah, Germany are, are a really strong side right yeah. now. And as you say, I think they'll be right up there for me. Spain, England, Germany, probably the three yeah, favourites. Maybe so. France, if you still believe maybe. in Wendy Renard, <laughs> um, which I always do. So yeah. yeah, maybe they'll win it. One last her up. <laughs> yeah. Actually, no, she will never stop playing. She right. just keep going forever. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think it'll be interesting. South Africa, obviously, tomorrow evening. That will... I won't tell us a whole lot, if we, unless we lose, in which case, panic stations. If we lose, there's another video coming Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I don't think South Africa will tell us an awful lot, but we will... It'll be interesting to see who plays. I think yeah. it will be the bigger question and who can perform well enough to really give themselves an opportunity. I thought Jess Nas, when she came on the other evening, looked really good. She did. Germany, I thought she came on and looked sharp. Which is bizarre because so. Tottenham have... Like, you know, she has, I wouldn't say she's yeah. looked great for Tottenham this season, especially compared to what she did last year. So, that that yeah, I hope, again, I'd like, I mean, may, it, I think they're the kind of players you want to see start. You want to see Nas start. I think it would be nice to see Chloe Kelly start. Because why? Bec- no, because she's I think, not because she's not playing though. That's the thing I think that's people forget is that you know yes she hasn't done anything this season, but that's because she's not started. Yeah, if but she I, can't I play well. She's reward, not on the pitch. I think she should be rewarding players who who have performed well for their other self sides, who have shown they've got that quality. Yeah, but in attack, we'll just play hemp. 
Well, Nikita Paris. Not even called up. Yeah. Is she? Yeah. yeah. What is up with that? Frank that Kirby. Is, true. is now is she she's in the English squad, yeah. isn't she? Yeah, so get her involved. Even Aggie Beaver Jones. That's that is the big one for me, but Russo did play well, so I'm not too frustrated. But when we sub Russo off and we brought on Chloe Kelly. That, and I that was, was bizarre. Job and put Hemp through the middle. Yeah, that Don't do no that. Sense You've got Aggie Beaver Jones on the bench. Do not put Hemp up front. That was bizarre. Yeah. Anyway, the South Africa sh- will be interesting. Hopefully, we can put a few past and build up a bit of confidence. Yeah. USA in November will be very, very telling. It'll be exciting, nonetheless. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. England win. That will be good. But that is everything for our review of England's international break so far. Obviously, South Africa coming up. If they lose that or win 10-0, we'll be back with another video on Wednesday. If not, look out for our uh, other content. We will be having a video out on Wednesday this week. Uh, we don't know what that will be yet. We'll decide after the England game. I've got a yes. couple of ideas though, so look out for that on Wednesday. Other than that, that is everything from us today. Thank you guys very, very much for watching and we'll see you next time. See ya.